We're starting on the second image of um, our motif, which is a farmhouse in Lincoln, Massachusetts. This time we're going to paint it as a blizzard-like scene. I'm starting with a little bit of yellow ochre to identify the shapes that are important in the piece, <clears throat> and especially to alert myself to whites that I want to preserve as I'm painting the background and foreground. Just, and this yellow ochre will pretty much disappear. And then I'm going to extend this uh, same yellow ochre up above the barn, up above the, the homestead. The reason is I, well, multi, uh, more than one reason. I want to wet the paper so that I can paint wet into wet and get a lot of soft edges up in the atmosphere. And I want to give a little bit of that yellow color to come through the cooler grays that I'm going to be applying. So the reason I'm using the yellow ochre at this into the sky area is for two, two different purposes. While it's still glistening very wet, I'm adding a combination of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. In fact, this whole painting is basically three colors. Burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and this yellow ochre. At some point, I'll be adding a little bit of neutral tint and a towards the end a little bit of white but the, the the workload is going to three different colors and you can see the strokes that i'm adding now are um, identifying the the forest in a very abstract and loose manner and allows me to think a lot about the positions of things and the design of the the background rather than individual trees or or uh, trying to paint anything realistically. I can think about these large masses and adjust the darks so that they work uh, to showcase the roof and the building. And also, uh, because the paper is wet, I'm able to evoke a lot of soft edges. And these edges I provoke even further by using a spray bottle and spraying into this wet area and keeping my paper at an angle so that this is all these colors are being drawn down and will give a feeling of a sort of windswept atmosphere as this dries. Uh, you can see I've kind of worked around the edges of the barn that I could see from that uh, initial yellow ochre painting and I'm um, working on dry paper now and starting to place the deep warm grays into the face of the building. So I've altered the gray from the background which was more of a ultramarine bluish gray to a warmer sienna based gray into the building. About the same tonality perhaps a little darker and definitely leaving a lot of hard edges at this stage. You see my hand running over the paper now. What I'm doing is I'm tossing a bit of salt into the the sky. Um, I feel it's the right stage. In other words, the paper is just starting to lose its glisten. And uh, it makes it an, an ideal time to flick some salt into those areas and create a, a random pattern of, of dots that will look like snow. Uh, we can't see it at this stage, but as the painting dries, it'll come out more and more. Um, I use uh, ground salt uh, because it gives me different sizes. It's different than getting the Morton salt, which is all pretty much the same size. This is a little different and gives you some variation in the size of the marks that it makes. Also, I like the taste better, so it's... Again, two purposes. Everything has two purposes. So I'm continuing to work in the face of the building, and you see just before that I, I developed a gray passage in the front of the painting, um, trying to concentrate the light towards the house. And I'm using a bit of brightness uh, from the right-hand side as kind of a lead-in. There's not a distinct road here, but this path of light will serve to 
help bring us into the painting and towards the house. While this wash is wet, I have a chance to deepen it with more color or, as you see now, throwing some salt onto the building as well. Uh, if you look closely at the upper right and above the house, you can start to see that effect from the salt. And it uh, resembles snow. It does a great job of giving us a feeling of snow. Snow falling, snow being blown around in different directions. It, it goes where it wants to go. We think we're in control, but actually this painting is... Uh, the, the watercolor is doing a lot of the work, controlling the bleeds and, um, you know, uh, distributing the salt, uh, creating little accidentals. You can see one on the left-hand side. The painting has dried, and I'm adding this blue as an adjustment. I felt it was disconnected on the left-hand side, and I uh, could see in my mind's eye that if I carried the right amount of blue in the lower corner here, I could keep the shape of that drifting uh, snow and connect it a little more um, positively to the left-hand side. Uh, and going back and forth with that blue and some clean water to soften edges and blend uh, some of the edges that they feel a little rough. I'm going to do that on the rooftop now. I'm using a real small brush and lightly going over the edges. And then as the edges are wet, I take a paper towel and pull down on the edges in effect making them much softer and blurry. So it feels like there's something passing between us and the house. That something would be snow or moisture. Now you can see the painting is starting to have a finished quality. Things that we add at this point will be added to complement what's here already and to possibly unify um, parts of the painting that feel a little out of sync. I feel I need something to kind of push the house back into the painting a little more. The fence I envision would do that and that's why I'm adding it now. It's tricky because I can't make it too dark. It'll take over the painting and I can't make the lines too solid. Uh, they'll look static and they'll look out of place in this painting. So I'm using broken lines, a lot of dry brush. And um, to finish these off, I'm going to, again, add some salt and uh, a little bit of white splatter at the end to push them into the painting. Right now you can feel that they're kind of coming out a little too far. We want the atmosphere to be complete well, what I just did was I added some water in the shape of a couple of squares, three squares, to resemble illuminated windows. Now I'm going about with some white paint, white, uh, it's Holbein, uh, titanium white. It's transparent, but if you use it very thickly and in the manner that I'm applying it is just as a splatter, you can again uh, create this feeling of snow. Especially important to kind of thicken that up in parts of the house, uh, in parts of the fencing. You can see the finished painting now, how the salt works and how the splatter works to create this movement of snow all around the house. And uh, you can see the effect of edges, where the edges are sharp. There's a few on the house that are sharp um, the, that comes forward where the, the blurred edges in the sky, on the roof lines, um, on uh, some of the boards and on the truck in the front are blurred. So they feel like the snow is passing or the wind is, is whipping in front of uh, these parts of the painting. And uh, there's some dry brush in the front and the fencing that also uh, allows the eye to move through it rather easily. The sharp edges, which are few, really act to hold the eye in one place. And this is the painting. <laughs>